uh, to the ED, the accounting officer, are very clear. For us here as an accountability committee, we are interested in the actions that were taken against the officers who were found guilty of misappropriating the taxpayers' money. So we would like you to specifically answer to the actions you took. Or if you didn't take any action, say I didn't take any action. But those things of Manya URA, you have a, a ratio, you, you join at the same time, those ones are not necessary. Just stick to the answers relating to that issue. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just spoke. The first issue is, can you confirm if there is a financial loss of this money? That is number one. Then number two, what action did you take? And in terms of evidence, the documentation. So you must you say this was further procedure? Chair, you are out the further procedure. So now, uh, Honorable Bakawindo also has another further procedure. So yes, chair, my uh, concern was that you should, you should answer specific questions. Do you, do you answer is true or false? Was there financial loss? Then to what action did you take? To do and you implement. Are you detached from council? I want to get to that because once the chairperson also starts, we also start, I, 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 and we shall end up in the field. We have. That's the exact word you used. You found them culpable. We have with that yourself, I think it's you who put it in place, right? To, to look into this issue. And this was their conclusion. Basing on the available evidence, the committee did investigate and found that there was financial loss occasioned by five people to the tune of 9.28 billion. So for them, they did their part. Said, look, these people here are culpable for all intents and purposes. They are guilty of occasioning a financial loss of 9.28 billion. Yours was to take action. What action did you take, if any? Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. My first action was... We want to know are them. they here in this room? We want to know them. They are not here, but uh, they I think they are junior staff. These yeah. people normally come with top management. Uh, but anyhow, yes, what's clear is that two left, three are still within service of the entity. Yeah. So, so now tell us the action yeah, so, you took. So, so we shall also need them here and have questions put to them as well. That, that's the follow. We, we yeah. can determine. You see, what Chair, I, I again, as you have alluded, these staff will submitted their defenses. Uh, and the action I took was uh, after the board meeting, I mean the management meeting, uh, to confirm that at that time in June, uh, this uh, council had not yet been inaugurated because they came two months later. So at that time, we didn't have the board. Uh, so that's when management uh, reviewed the issues, acknowledging the significant gaps in the imports clearance system, as I gave you the background, that any staff would potentially be culpable even if you fired this uh, five. But also we acknowledge that uh, a year before, court had ordered back six staff uh, to the bureau whom we had fired. So as a, uh, as a ED, I looked at the past vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the current and realized that circumstances were more or less the same, that uh, there was significant weaknesses in the system and then acknowledge that it is the role of management to put internal control systems which cannot give staff the opportunity. So as a result, management say that, okay, this is not a disciplinary report, it's an investigation report. Can you do further review and take appropriate action? So in other words, management empowered me to evaluate and take what I believe should both protect the institution, but also to make sure that we do not go into the potential litigation by this staff because if you look at the defense by staff, they were actually denying the, what, uh, the offense. So as a result, I took administrative measure, withdraw them from the, their deployment, because that's where they had opportunity, and redeploy them. So I, reploy, I redeploy them to other functions other than the, the function where they caused the, uh, the, the offense. Uh, of course, two of them then had to leave the bureau. Uh, so that is the, 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 the action I took. I do acknowledge that uh, when the nine standards council came on board, uh, my chairman, they took interest in it. An honorable chairman, you know that these cases don't die. So my proposal is that the, the, the board can actually uh, consider reviewing the decision of the ED and take appropriate uh, action. Which
could be possibly suitable. Maybe yeah, just before we get to the board. So I'm coming on the board. So you have said two staff had to leave. Did they leave of their own volition or did you push them out? No, they actually uh, resigned. They and resigned because they, their own. they could not survive at the headquarters and other functions. No, no, no. Did you ask them to resign or did they resign on their own? On their own, Chairman. On their own? Yes, Chairman. So that was not action you took. Because if it's you that had asked them to resign, that's you acting. So the action ones, was recalling them for further deployment, but then resigning was on their own. Did, did you think that was... Um, I'm going to pick you, colleagues. Let me just get this out of the way. Them and redeploying them was adequate for 9.28 billion shillings? You, you're actually rewarding them as opposed to punishing them. Uh, Chair, that is a very correct observation. Uh, again, as I uh, alluded, uh, 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 based on the past, where six staff were ordered and we had to pay all the areas for the time while they were away, and I was fearing that uh, I could cause or, uh, an obligation to the institution, and that was the focus I was looking at. Uh, revenue comes, non-tax revenue comes, but uh, I was looking at the core mandate report was produced and the management placed it onto your mandate or during the proceedings of the mandate whether director legal what advice what advice did director legal give and was this advice in writing or not to I hope you're taking note huh? because you need to tell us whether actually you sought the legal advice and if it came and in what form. So take ever note since, of all these questions. Ever since board or council was inaugurated, was this issue ever placed or addressed to board to be handled? Or we are just mentioning it here that maybe they can handle. Three, this was just a, 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 an iceberg. We have a lineup of several other people who, uh, who caused financial loss in the same manner. What action have you taken against those ones? More than a hundred of them and more than uh, 10 billions were lost. The other ones are nine and there is another lineup of more than 10 billion which is listed. What action did you take? Thank you. Um, let me balance. Yes, uh, Chair, please chair. On page three of that report, that the team, that the team, uh, makes a very important revelation here. Uh, please proceed on. On six point one point two, page three of the of the report, the team says there are a number of e-portal entries whose CIF value was below one thousand dollars. These were not included in the computations for surcharge fees at 15% of CIF and destination inspection. That means that this loss we are talking about of 9.2 is actually very, very low. If we had to compute all the ones, all the amounts below $1,000, we would get a very huge amount. That I, I just wanted to bring it to the attention of, uh, of the ED. Secondly, I'm very happy that the ED and the team, they have presented their human resource manual. And in their HR manual, on page 141, there are disciplinary measures, which are in their HR manual. When you look at the disciplinary measures, they have categorized the different offenses as minor, uh, serious, and grave. And among the grave offenses, the number one grave offense in their HR manual, page 144, they are saying soliciting directly or indirectly for personal use and or collecting money from the public other than in the cause of official duties without written permission from the executive director. So uh, the manual gives the director options on uh, the actions that he should have taken, which I think he ignored.
Yes, Honorable. Yeah, so, Selamaras, uh, the So, uh, my submission on this is that uh, these manuals are there, uh, not as redundant documents, but the, the purpose is to guide, is to direct. They give guidance to the people using those, these manuals on certain aspects. So in this case, uh, we would like to know if by then this manual was in place when this, these matters came up and why the ED didn't uh, visit this, this manual, the HR manual, to take some action. Thank okay. you. Honorable Simamala. Colleagues, let's, let's shoot them lower down on some meeting and I wanted to, him to say after that, after that offense of soliciting money, what does the HR manual talk about the penalization or what is supposed to be done after that? Because now that is where we, 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 we would be looking at. Okay, this happened 9.2. Money was solicited or the issue, the what was manipulated. Does it go to management and board? Does the ED have power to dismiss? What happens after such a grave mistake? HR could help us. Honorable Itungo and Honorable Nangoli, it has been said. Eh? And the uh, chair, one of the concern is, uh, of course, the first issue is compliance. That they, as as the, an organization charge of standards, you should be the one set standards that your decision should comply with the acts you have. But also, my concern, chair, I want to see the where is the human resource person in this decision we are taking, because if you look at the, the serious and grave offences. The head of HR should be involved here. So, where is the head of HR in this? Uh, it is important according to the to the manual here. So, you may find he took a decision as the ED when the head of HR should be the person in charge of this. So, maybe you can hear from the HR person on this matter, Chairman. Honorable Nangoli. Thank you, Chair. Mine is just Chair. The way the ED has submitted, actually, I want to assure you members that. He, ED, you are a disgrace to this country. You are an embarrassment to this country. Because 9.6 billion people have stolen, there's an internal report on to that, confirming that these people have stolen the money. You call for a meeting and you sit as an individual and you decide to keep these people around simply because you are protecting the image of the organization when people have stolen money. To me, I feel ED you are really a, a disservice to this country. Something must be done. Thank you. Honorable again, and finally, on, finally Honorable Cooper, and then we, and when you list the, the offenses, of course, by face of it, by face of it, you look, you know this is a, a grave offense. Now, I want to know from the, from the, from the board chairman, will this grave case for me, I would think of these people should have been dismissed. Who has the power to dismiss? Who dismisses the staff? Because uh, a report, an investigation has come. Uh, who would say the ED should have forwarded this if he's not the one with the powers to dismiss, forwarded to the board. Say, please, this is beyond me. The board should take action. If we failed, like we are seeing, the board got to know about this. Did the board summon this file? and say this matter is of a grave nature and it takes action because if it is dismissal, who has the powers? Is it not, is it not the board? So I just need to be clarified who has those powers to dismiss in matters of grave matter like this. But then there's other records of several other staff who occasioned another financial loss to the tune of about 10 billion. Honorable Abdallah, did you do the math there? It's about 10 billion, the others, is it? So you, you're having financial loss of 9.28 billion here. Then another team, several of them, about 10 billion. That's about 19.28 billion. Now, my, my worry also is, so if these people tinkered with the system and let these commodities in, because the surcharge issues and so on could mean two things. One, they did not do the, the inspection on the other end. So when they come here, there must be a surcharge of 
Now, that surcharge has been waived by this people tinkering with the system. So the commodities are out there. That would mean also, very potentially, these commodities are of low standard. Because why did they skip inspection before coming into the country? Now that they have come into the country, they have also been cleared as okay. Because a lot, a lot more focus gets to be on the commodities which were not inspected. That's why there's even a surcharge. Why are you dodging the pre-export verification to be sure you're conforming to the standards? Now that you're here, there will be a surcharge, a fine, and we must be sure what you have brought is good. So we have lost money, 19.28 billion, but also these commodities are out there. Yesterday people were complaining about things that are out there on the market, cosmetics that are fake products, Metallic bars that uh, have low standards, some of those are anyway manufactured here. Buildings are crumbling because you people seem to be sleeping on the job. Talk to us about all these issues. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, today is not UNBS of uh, 2020 and beyond. Uh, the issue at hand is, uh, as I've told you, is was arising for the past, for the history. Uh, I want also to add that uh, the team went backwards beyond the the period that commission, I think up to 2018 or 2017. So we are really talking about a historical aspect here. Uh, you have actually brought it very well that as a CEO responsible for protecting this country against dumping or substandard products. Is it about money? Yes, money comes as a default, but priority number one is about the commodity to make sure that those commodities don't come out. And therefore the issues of focusing on the system and the processes and controls to make sure that does not occur going forward is what actually I've done. So we are saying that, yes, the past happened, mistakes were done, but the future, the current and the future is better and very promising. So I do... How do we know that? Uh, because if you are not able to take action on such a serious matter, meaning you didn't take it serious, how do we know that now you have taken it serious, that you have even sorted out the system. How do we know beside, beyond just your assertion? Because my thinking is, step number one would be to say this is a very serious matter. Let's take action now and then also for the future. You're telling us your action was focused mostly on the future. But by not dealing with the past and present, we have doubts about the future. Chair, yeah, the present was part of the future because from day one I needed to make sure that uh, UNBS is not the same uh, and that's why I looked backwards. I do acknowledge that possibly we would have done stringent measures possibly to dismiss the staff, but I was also giving you the history to the previous dismissed staff. Actually, we, we dismissed staff uh, as soon as we are very sure that there is no legal implication, as you have said, we consult. And the decision. Yes. Let, let's allow him to um, first finish this bit because you also need to talk to us about, now that you're saying legal implication, there was a question about whether you consulted your legal department. Yes. So please, first respond. Looking at protecting the institution against litigation, uh, addressing the problem at hand today going forward, which I can confidently say that we have addressed. Chairman, you have asked the evidence uh, with the imports manager here, who is the administrator of that e-portal today. He can tell you that it is very difficult for you to sneak anything into this country today unless you have passed through a porous border where UNBS does not exist. But uh, we are... Edie, we are Edie, listen to the Edie, vice chair. Edie, uh, to the questions that have been asked, one, now, can you switch on your mic? I just, just want to... One, did you consult your legal team yes, yes or no a legal team a manager is part of management who took that decision i'm referring to so he sits in management so we believe that's a collective responsibility no, just after management he did not okay so after management you didn't he d you did not consult him because he was you part of management and had a resolution of management so you I assumed you assumed that he had been part of, being part of it. Yes. So, the legal person, where are you? Can you please... Uh, thank you, Chair. What I know is that uh, the committee, the committee had a legal officer who was advising as the process was ongoing. 
and the, the decision, the recommendation, also included the advice of the legal officer. Uh, me as legal counsel, definitely the matter did not reach. Uh, who was legal in counsel. that? Who was in that meeting? The legal officer. Yeah, yes. Sen senior senior legal officer uh, Doreen Navle. She was the one there. Yes. Did she brief you after Pardon? the meeting? Were you briefed Vice Chair, after the me, meeting? Let me clarify. No, no, no. Just hold on. I'm still with him. Did, did did she brief you? Because I am assuming she's attending on your as a team. So did she brief you about the outcome of that meeting? Of course, she told me what they had recommended. And the what did she tell you? Pardon? What did she tell you that they recommended? The, the, their recommendation, she told me that the, the officers were culpable for the, the charges or the, for causing the loss. Uh -huh. And the, that they had forwarded the report back to ED who had commissioned for the, the report. And who wanted the answer was the ED. And so they had sent their recommendations back to ED for action. Okay, so you are confirming that as a legal team, you confirm that action should be taken. The recommendation, Madam, is very clear what action should have been taken. Okay, thank you. So, E.D., uh, you wanted to say something? Chair, yeah, chair something chair, which chair, I have left chair, out to him. Just a moment. What about what he is trying to compare about the completed case that it was similar to the one did you write any legal memorandum about that, that you see we will face this, we are likely to face this? Because he's relying on the previous case to, uh, to, 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 to get this one out of the hook. Did you write any legal memorandum out of the other case which we lost to, 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 to be a link or to decide how to handle the next case or the case at hand? You, you are seeing me? Are you not the head legal? Because no, if the ED is saying, based on some past cases, we decided to handle this one that way. So, did you give that advice, that legal memorandum? Yes, but I was, I, I was not asked to, to give legal advice on this particular case. So, I don't see how I could have given me. Were you part of the advice. management meeting that sat? Yes, I was part of the management meeting. Did you give any I advice gave, legally? I, I gave my advice. Actually, even before this this uh, management meeting, there was another committee which had been set up to to actually determine whether this matter should be investigated. And in that meeting, uh, my my recommendation was that if there is financial loss, then this one should be taken to court. But as you know, in management, it's about voting. It's about consensus. Yes, it is a consensus. Chair, chair majority decided otherwise and that's how we went. Chair, uh, I just need final clarification from the head legal. I'm not sure I picked you well. You made mention of a name, somebody, Doreen, who attended the meeting, not you. Now you're saying you attended. So no, Doreen, is... Doreen was a member of the committee that investigated. Oh, I am interested in the management meeting. Did you attend? Uh, yes, I attended the management And you meeting. gave your view? I did give my view. And what was your view? As I stated, clarity. that this is a matter where there is financial loss. And if we are, we are saying that we are an institution that, is, that tolerates corruption up to zero level, this is a matter that we should take to court so that other staff members will see this and probably they will also comply. And then you also made mention that there was voting. So you're, you're, you're confirming to us no, no, that... No, 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 no. It's not voting as in one. It, it is about unanimous decision. Okay. Yes. He anyway, that he did not get legal advice. Uh, but now your head legal is saying in that meeting of management which he attended, his advice was, look, if we are saying we do not tolerate corruption at all, let's take these people to court. Let's prosecute them. Do you remember that advice from your head legal? 
Chair, uh, it is not uh, good practice to disagree with uh, your juniors here, but uh, minutes have been shared and that advice is not documented in those minutes. Chair. Do you remember, so are, are you saying you don't remember it coming through at all? Uh, not at all. I, what you have seen, the decision was that ED is not a disciplinary report. Please uh, review and uh, consider as appropriate based on the past, uh, which you have seen. The past they were talking about is how we were, actually how we were faulted by court for dismissing the six staff which were ordered to come back. Okay, let, let, let's check the minutes and ascertain it. You're saying in that management meeting you gave legal advice, let's prosecute these people. Your ED is saying you did not say any of that. How do we believe you? How do you want us to believe you? Mr. Chair, I was attending as a manager in a management meeting and I gave my views as a manager in charge of legal. I was not in charge of the minutes and I don't sign the minutes. And frankly, to tell the truth, I have seen the minutes, but that is after. Okay, finally, who else was in that meeting? Hmm? Meeting. Okay, um, let, let me request that you stand, because this is a serious matter, yeah? Let me request you stand. We want to hear you out on whether you had the legal advice of your head legal. Because his advice, I want to imagine, was not just... ICT, you have to be reminded that you were in that meeting. Who else was part? Is that all the team that was in that meeting? Okay, please talk to us, each one of you on the microphone, whether... You remember the advice? Chair, uh, I did not because I will tell you that uh, when they brought the report to management, it was never discussed. Management was not comfortable. They, they actually said that we cannot consider, we cannot be the same people considering invest, investigation report, and again, we also consider disciplinary report. Procedure, it was wrong. So it was not discussed. It was, management was not uh, in agreement with uh, ED presenting it to management. So they guided that management, uh, ED goes back and takes the right procedure or uh, action or, since it wasn't a disciplinary report. Okay, let's colleague, There was never a lot of uh, extensive discussion. Procedurally, after the investigations, the HR manual provides that you constitute a disciplinary committee which meets the people who are mentioned in the investigation report. Then it is the disciplinary committee which ordinarily should present management. That gap was not covered. So at that time, there was nothing. Actually, some of us have been expecting, waiting for the disciplinary committee to present management. Who institutes that disciplinary committee? Who is meant to institute it? Uh, the accounting officer. Okay. Let's move to the next person. Honorable Chair, I have no differing opinion because management discusses disciplinary committee reports. I also want to say that uh, this matter originated from me. I was the one who presented it to management for investigation. So it would really be in my interest that, you know, this matter would come to a, a full conclusion. Thank you. Okay. Honorable Chair and members, um, call Timothy Sekandi. The microphone is working. Just speak louder. Hello? Honorable yes, go Chair, ahead. Now, now I can be heard. If you um, increase your voice a little, you'll be heard. Okay. Properly. Um, personally, I was on the committee that investigated the matter. So I couldn't be the same person taking a decision on the matter. So that particular day, I was, uh, I was uh, instructed to present the report. But when I reached management, uh, we discovered that we had a gap uh, in our procedure, in our HR procedure. All disciplinary, all investigations are supposed to go to the office of the ED for assessment whether or not they should proceed to the disciplinary committee.
So, Chair, we did not present the report, and that was my role during that meeting. Okay. Your neighbor, the Deputy ED. The report went came to management. Uh, management noted those gaps, as said, and it did not merit uh, taking disciplinary action, so it was referred back. Summit. Back to where? To, to the office of the ED. To do what? To make further evaluation and take appropriate action. Okay, let's hear from the last person. Thank you. Well, I remember attending that uh, the management meeting when the committee presented their findings. And uh, what I remember we agreed was that uh, there was a gap, as my, uh, my colleagues have already said. And so the matter was supposed to be taken back to disciplinary committee, such that the disciplinary committee does whatever they have to do, and then present later to management. But uh, uh, as my colleague uh, Martin and uh, the manager internal audit said, we are the ones who came up even with those figures from the system. Thank you. Chair. Now, Chair. what I seem to hear from your team, the bug stops with you. Yes. So this matter gets to be presented, but it has to procedurally go through a disciplinary committee, which you're meant to institute. You sat as the disciplinary committee yourself and took a decision to recall these people and reassign them. Why? Is that, is that what the law provides for? Because you're meant to institute a disciplinary committee, which you did not do. You sat and unilaterally became the disciplinary committee and took this action. Why? Uh, Chair, uh, I think I need to emphasize that um, if you look at that recommendation that the uh, matter be referred to ED to evaluate and take appropriate action, I thought uh, if that was a resolution of management, so I think uh, I did not expect to have been blamed to have taken possibly a contrary position when it was not very clear. So I thought that that had empowered me to evaluate. As I told you, I look at the past history where six staff were ordered back to the institution and the institution had to pay heavily. What, what does the manual say? Because your colleagues have talked about the manual and the procedures therein. Did you interest yourself in that money? A chair, indeed, the, 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 the process is that uh, if there is a prima facie case, as had been alluded, you institute a disciplinary committee. Uh, and we are saying that, yes, that was a procedure which was not undertaken uh, because these staff, as I've told you, submitted their defenses. If you look at the, the report, each of the staff submitted their defenses. Uh, so I evaluated the defenses from staff, as I said, concluded that really the, 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 the issue was about our systems and unfortunately I focus more on taking corrective actions in the root cause uh, and then so and you ignored the culprits no administratively I saw that was enough but I'm now uh, finding that possibly that was not the right judgment okay uh, vice chair person you should be familiar with the HR policy uh, Please don't make many statements. Just say, I folded here. I should have done this, this, and this. And then we go ahead. Absolutely. And then secondly, Chair, I must also uh, register my disappointment with the head legal. Don't just talk for the sake of saying it because now you've seen that if I say something which is right, because now my friend is in hot soup, I will also be in hot soup. You just lied to the committee, which is very wrong. What is wrong with what is what is so wrong with you stating the fact as it is? You should have just said the, the facts as it is. But for you to lie, it is terrible and it is very very shameful. I cannot leave this meeting without you tell, telling you this. You should have just stated the truth, and it would have helped the committee see what we went through again, just because of your statement. Thank you, Chair. And I have, I'm suggesting, Chair, that some of these people should take a note before we proceed. Um, 
chair that there was an inside job that uh, staff internally decided to share even sleep that night. I don't know what I would do the following day. The fact that he just decided to keep quiet about everything, he didn't report to police, he didn't report the case anywhere in this fraud, and it is as simple as that. Now we should just be moving on other specific actions uh, as a committee on this matter. Otherwise, for me, I can conclude from his inactions that this was an inside job. Yeah. With what we are seeing, I can see really UNPS is uh, very rotten, and it is a, a real rotten institution in our country. By the submission we have been hearing since yesterday, one thing I want to agree that is like the ED is working in isolation. The ED is not working with the board. The ED is not working with the fellow colleagues, the staff. By the submission of the staff, if you hear, since yesterday and today. And I want to really add on what uh, the vice said to the legal counsel. I thought the legal counsel will talk to his uh, uh, responsibilities. What does, he, what does he really supposed to do in that organization? Does he advise through the meetings, committee meetings? I mean, uh, the, the management meetings he was, he's talking about, oh, he advises the ED in writing on a particular issue independently, not really taking decision in a, in a group of people and the people just vote, maybe like he's saying, that the bigger number takes it all. His, his role as a, as a legal counsel, he should have told us that he wrote to the ED, guided him this, do you need somebody else to come and take decisions for you, or you need a group of people to come and assist in taking decisions, or you are supposed to take a decision in your office as a person chair, we are really in a total shit. We need to really go deep into this issue. Thank you. You mentioned the assumption anywhere that they received, they gave a legal advice. So he just lied to us here. I had expected the head of human resource to have given us a summary occasion to the, to, the, to the body. We need to learn from the ED why they never opted for summary termination. And two, the UNBS has a body. The law provides, the act provides that it's a corporate body with the, with the capacity to sue or be sued. In terms of recovery, now that there was, there was an apparent error on record that money has been lost, we want to also ascertain what, what measures have been taken or are, in the, or are being taken to ensure that you take recovery measures. Yeah, because dismissal does not talk about money. Dismissal is dismissal. You lose a job and salary plus allowances. But in terms of recovery, we are talking about figures which are on record. And when, when it comes to recovery, this is money lost by UNBS, probably by, for, on behalf of government. What are the measures on, on being undertaken or to be undertaken to recover this money from, the, from any individual, whether internal or external? Okay. I'll clear back to submit. Honorable Itungo, there is this document, Mr. Chairman, and in the document, there is a letter from the IGG. And this letter is addressed to the chairperson. Let's first get this out of the way. No, it then, is, Chair, it is connected, Mr. Chairman. Chair, when you read the letter, mm -hmm. the letter says, Irregular recruitment of the executive director of Uganda uh, National Bureau of Standards. No, let, let's do this. Chair, um, no, Honorable no, just a I second. Can I conclude, Chair? No, I why are you? Because I want, that's the document submitted by the chairman of the board. Of Uganda Bureau of Standards. Irija recruited Mr. David Livingstone Ebin as the executive director without the required qualifications for the job. Number two, the Minister of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives at the time influenced the recruitment process, resulting in two alterations of recruitment parameters by National uh, Council. Number three, that there was a conflict of interest by MS Future Options. The firm cont uh, contracted to conduct the recruitment process. I had an existing contract with the UNBS. Now, Mr. Chairman, when you have this document from the IGG, and the IGG is saying the person who has been recruited is the not right person for the job. So the issue of incompetence, Mr. Chairman, and even taking the legal advice, you cannot give a legal advice to an incompetent person. So in summary, Chair, the gentleman is not ready for the job, is not the right person for the job, so the man should not be blamed, Mr. Chairman. Yeah.
Chair. To know through ED quickly, a quick one, whether these people who were assisted to to bypass UNBS system, whether they are traceable, whether they can be traced, and which caused this financial loss. You mean the staff members? No, 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 no. These Ugandans, the companies, the importers, whether they can be traced. And since this, they can be traced, what effort since then has been taken to ensure that they are reprimanded or they, 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 they pay whatever they, they circumvented? Two, I want you, want you to tell us, out of this long list which we have brought to your attention, why did you only single out these five? Because they had the, 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 the biggest value, or oh, why did you only single out these five to be investigated? Hey, Deja. Maybe you can just step forward and occupy one of those seats that resigned. Did they get their terminal benefits? The two, Madam HR, the ED is saying you respond. Chair, uh, we do not give uh, terminal benefits. We get gratuity uh, every after a year. And, uh, gratuity and so on, right? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, there was a question about period of the past. As I was telling you, we are trying to look backwards and all them are culpable. We, when we started, we started work in, in uh, October of last year. Then uh, I received a letter from the Inspector General of Government in my capacity as the chairperson of the council, asking me to advise the minister to, I mean, to dismiss the ED for the grounds that are in that letter. Now, we held a meeting as council, and uh, we, we formed an opinion that there was uh, some problems with interpretation of the word incompetence for which the IGG wanted us to dismiss um, to dismiss the ED because they wanted us, the, the IGG was saying that he was incompetent uh, at, I mean he, he was not competent to be given the job and for us, according to the Act, we saw to the competence, incompetence of which we could advise the minister related to his performance and not recruitment. We formed that opinion and we wrote a letter. And fortunately, I thought our letter was um, at, the, at the bureau, but the executive secretary to the, to the ED was unable to find it, but this is a letter that Mr. Chairperson, you can easily get from the record of the IGG, but I don't have the record now. I've not been able to find it. But our, uh, we were just saying that we, the incompetence that we read in the, in the Act is a different to the incompetence of recruitment, and we've never got a reply. And I had, the minister had actually already written to me, uh, insisting that um, we dismiss the ED, this is a personal sentiment. I wish I had listened. <laughs> I didn't, so that is a matter that has passed. But, but now, if you look in the, in the, in the, um, the small folder I've, I've given out, you will find something very, very strange. Because this one, I gave it um, page numbers. And I'll, I'll draw your attention to page 39 of this, of this folder, page 39. And allow me to read it, Mr. Chairperson. Page 39. This is the ED writing to a board member here. The board member is here today. Ndugu, take interest in those engagements regarding funding to the Bureau 
which I'm being accused of mis misappropriating funds at the source. Then the body member says, all right, brother. Then the ED writes, you remember how much I forked out to our colleagues for protection during the IGG issue? 100 million. I thought this would bind us to guard each other in the future, but alas, I could, and the ED continues, I could have done something better outside the UNBS with that money. The board member says, oh my God, and we are this confused. Then he says, remember, you were one of the mediators to agree to settle the matter internally based on the Amal Muhammad, who is also a board member. Now, he concludes, it concludes, now you understand the people we are dealing with. The last time I checked chairperson, bribing public officials, it was an offense. So, the ED is alleging to have bribed the board 100 million, which he could have used somewhere else. And this is a verifiable matter, and I invite this committee to take special interest in it. Okay. Um, so, so according to this, David Ebiru, the ED, is one who was writing this, and uh, talking about the 100 million shillings, and Robert Mwanje was responding. So, maybe let's begin with Mr. Robert Mwanje, who is uh, here, a board member. Is, is this a conversation that uh, you had with the ED? 100 million shillings? And he was surprised you did not get your card. Is this something you picked interest in? Actually, I was very surprised to people that what could have happened. So that's how I inquired from the chairman and from Mr. Mann. And they said that is impossible. Mr. ED, Mr. Mwanje is here. And just to repeat this, you remember how much I forked out to our colleagues for protection during the IGG issue? A hundred million. I thought this would bind us to guard each other in the future, but alas, this is interesting. So talk to us about this. So you had this conversation with Mr. Mwanje? Chair, yeah, I confirmed that I had that conversation with uh, uh, Mr. Mwanje, uh, and that's why uh, that has come. Uh, my chairman here, of course, must be taking advantage that I didn't record him or photograph him, uh, but that's the fact. <laughs> okay, so... Let's get the fact. Chair. Are you, just a second. Just a second. Uh, David Livingston, Ebiru, are you confirming to this committee that you bribed board members with 100 million shillings? I was asked through the, by the chair, and I must uh, do the needful to cool down what is going on. And you gave them 100 million shillings? Yes, sir. Where did you get the 100 million shillings from? I borrowed the money. So this was personal money? Yes, sir. And you handed it over to who? through a uh, representative of the chairman, one of the board members here, Mr. Mr. Omar. Omar. He came to my office and picked it from my office. Was it cash? It was in what? Cash. Cash. In a bag? In what exactly? In a bag. Okay, so just to understand again properly, so you're saying you borrowed this money and uh, you're giving it to them for what? To cool down what exactly? Let's understand that. And when was this, by the way? That detail can be got uh, to write that letter back to IGG required that. So you saw the letter, he says he cannot trace. So that letter was a ransom that you know you are in trouble. I was even shown a letter from the minister to him to dismiss me uh, arising from that letter from IGG. So I was told, you see this, read it put it back. And that happened at a, a restaurant called Panamera in, uh, in opposite Kampala Parents. It's opposite Kampala Aburu. Parents. Because the chairman residence is in Aburu, so he called me there. Come urgently. This is the issue. To, uh, to cool this, do the needful. It's just that I'm not a spy. I didn't have a record of that. <clears throat> okay, so the IGG wrote to the chairman saying this man here 
is incompetent, he doesn't qualify, fire him. The minister writes also, minister of trade also writes to the chairman saying the ED does not qualify, fire him. Now you're saying, the chairman told you, look, I have this communication from the IGG, from the minister, yes. to fire you. Yes, sir. But for you not to be fired, do the needful. Do the needful. Yes, sir. And that's how you gave 100 million shillings yes, to Mr. Omar. Yes, sir. Personal money. Yes, sir. Mr. Omar. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Did you receive 100 million shillings from Mr. Ebiro? Definitely not, Mr. Chairman. The first time I came into contact with that information was from a gentleman called Ronald, who works for the Ministry of Trade. He's in internal security, who brought it to my attention via a WhatsApp. In fact, I'm looking for the WhatsApp now. Who told me, you have to watch out. The ED is spoiling your name. He's claiming that he gave you people 100. Actually, he said the money was actually given to my colleague, Mr. Mwanje. That's what the internal security agent told me. I said, but Mr. Mwanje to do what? He said, no. That's what is going around, and you better be very careful. And I have the WhatsApp message with me, Mr. Chairman. I'm willing to share that information with the committee through you. What's the content? Who are you chatting with again? Uh, there is an officer. He's an internal security officer who works for, uh, who is attached to Minister of Trade, who brought this matter to my attention. Around about a week ago, Mr. Chairman. Okay, read to us the content. This is on 10th of July, 2023. Good evening, big brother. You need to prevail upon a bureau as counsel. He's making very wild allegations against UNBS counsel and especially about you. He's playing a tribal card alleging to IGG stock parliament that the PS and council chairman want him out of office. He has vowed not to go down alone, but also that he has given 100 million. I've briefed um, office about it, and action may be taken. You say that's an ISO operative? A security officer security. attached to mm -hmm. Minister of Trade. Sir. Okay. You just come with that phone, with that message. Yes. So the issue was, first of all, to make relationship, but that's how the relationship started. And I saw to that, okay, these people are new. I've not worked them uh, with them before. How do I navigate through this situation where I am now left alone and the decision is solely on them? It was only the board now to determine my fate. As you have seen, IGG has written, the minister has even written the letter, read, a letter ready to be served, for me to be served, and now the key is only with what? With the chairman to what? Uh, to endorse. So, under that circumstance, Honorable Chair, uh, you would even not think whether there is a possibility that you can actually petition and come back later and how long that would take. So I thought keeping the job at hand was very urgent. And therefore, I trusted my chairman that he was doing what is right because he told me, I'm your mother, 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 you know, father hen now, that once these things cool down, going forward, you will, you will end your contract. So it was just uh, an emotional situation where you are left alone and nowhere to hide. And somebody offers that, I'm now providing for you protection. So that's where it came from. How much does the ED of UNDS earn per month? A chair, that, wa that was almost... Uh, uh, no, no, no. How much do you earn per month? 25 million gross. 25 million gross. So that was four months of my salary. And net? Uh, if you net off for 40% is now the, the new tax rate. How much comes to your account? Do you know it? Yes. I'm also encumbered. I also have loans, chair, so I need That's to... That's okay, say, but yes. you know how much? UNBS sends to your account? Yes, about to 11 million possibly at the end of the day. Net after the obligation to deduction from the loan, the bank loans where I'm having a running loan. And then I remain with a net of about 11 or so. Okay, the, the, the reason I ask that is uh, I'm also trying to find the motivation. You know, alternative ways of what? Of survival. Because okay. I believe that money is good enough. <laughs> Vice Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Chair to doing serious and grave 
crime like this is a rare one. But that doesn't ex ex exonerate you. And uh, you just, just like the chair said, you just confirmed, even when you are competent, you just confirmed that you are not competent. Whichever, ju whichever justification you give. So, uh, for me, Chair, in a way, our work has been made easy, and uh, really, with these confessions, I just wish you well wherever you will be. Yeah, that's 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 all I can I can say. That's all I can. Nothing. You can't. You can't justify. You have accepted. You, you bribed and you know what it means. You've been a long-serving servant, civil servant. You know what it means. So, don't even bother to explain that I did it because of this. It doesn't. For me, it even makes your case worse. Uh, it, is, it has been arranged that the money was handed over to Mr. Omar. Mr. Omar has denied the receipt of the money. He has instead said he got to know about this from someone and is telling us about the message. Uh, wouldn't it be procedure right, Chair, that he, we get hold of that phone? Now, the phone that has the message through which he got to know, because uh, you never know, Chair, that after here, in a few minutes, that message can disappear. Um, well, if, 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 if that message is deleted, that makes things worse for you. We, there's a way we are going to handle it. Chair, unfortunately for him, he, it, it is just a, he who arranges proves. Now, he says he didn't. If I were him, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would not just the hand over 100 million when I'm innocent. And actually, lawyers would probably have taken 10 million to protect him or defend him. So I have uh, no interest in that matter. He has arranged that he will prove. But I wanted to show you that this ED, while we all like money, his, his love for money is legendary. And he leaves, he leaves a trail, he leaves a trail of paperwork, Mr. Chairperson. Even Pro, there are some right to No, let's, let's, uh, no, 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 Just allow him to make the statement. A, a small one. Uh, uh, honorable. I'm, not, I'm not going to put it like I'm going to give you a chance. Don't insist. You ask the chairperson, and I'm saying wait. Please wait. Finish that statement. Switch on the mic. As I say, I have a box of documents, but I had thought that I stick to the letter I wrote to him on the 26th, but so many other things continue coming up. And there is um, a program for fuel marking, which we read together, which we run it together with the Ministry of Energy. Now, his sole role there is that he is on a small board of that Minister of Energy program. Using that position, he collects, he goes there and collects an amount of 237 million. 237 million. Then he is called by the IGG in an investigation together with other people. And they go to the, they write to the IGG and he has his signature here saying, Madam IGG, we are sorry, it was uh, an issue of uh, keeping records poorly, but we did the work. So, Madam IGG, out of my 237 million, can't you help me and I pay only 137 million? This is an ED of an organization for standards, and I, will, I beg to table this document. Yeah, because I was going to ask, uh, we did not... This type of, this cause shows you the relationship between uh, between the um, uh, the gain account uh, between the 100 million, you know, 
He picks money whenever he finds it. January 2023 at 2.30 p.m. at the 5th floor boardroom, Jubilee Insurance Center, we submit to you a request for reconsideration of the funds to be recovered. We acknowledge that there was laxity in supervision and poor culture in record keeping, which has led to mistakes on our side. However, we also take comfort in the fact that despite our weaknesses, we have managed to reduce the failure rate to as little as 0.5 percent. We therefore request that your office considers reviewing the figures that were presented to us to refund. Much as there were mistakes on our side, we feel the report presented did not fairly consider the fact that work was also done and funds were spent. Much as we are grateful for your office's gesture to settle out of court, we are convinced that the spirit of fairness will be better shown with the fact that work was actually done and up to 90 percent. But because of our mix, mistake of laxity in supervision and poor culture of keeping records, there was mismanagement of accountability, which we acknowledge. Hmm? There was mismanagement of accountability, which we acknowledge. Our prayers and therefore that you are therefore that your good office considers reviewing the figures as per our humble request in the table below. Below is a summary of the table showing the figures. We acknowledge we have failed, we failed to account for and propose to refund. Are all these members of staff of UNBS? There are three. There are three. Are three. Uh, Mr. Ebiru and some, somebody called Peter. Peter Chitimbo. Chitimbo. Who is Peter Chitimbo? Is Chair, uh, I think uh, as the chair promised, uh, I think entertainment, I think he has started. Uh, the issue is that uh, we have a MOU between Minister of Energy and UNBS to manage the quality of fuel in the country. So under that particular program, uh, there is field, field work. Actually, most of it is field work 24-7. So the issue is that, uh, again, that came from the whistleblowers to IGG that it appears that the money disbursed to the program staff is not being well spent. So that's where the IGG inquired, and uh, true, when IGG asked the accountability of the money disbursed for field work, it was found that uh, there was incomplete, they were incomplete. And therefore they said that, for you, yes, you have not stolen money, uh, you have not caused any loss, but uh, you have been found to be lax in what, in keeping your records, and therefore, they decided that you as supervisors, you must bear responsibilities. And so in other words, they tried to distribute based on responsibility of administering the program. But indeed, as you have seen, uh, no money was lost. It is just that uh, it was not the, the, the records of activities that were done were not supported. But the reports were there of what was done, uh, and that's where that uh, comes from. Have you refunded this money? Uh, no, we agreed that uh, we it is be refunded after uh, during uh, for one year. So that's mm -hmm. the arrangement. So every month, how much are you paying? Uh, there is no fixed amount that you are whatever you can, so long as for one year you are able to close it. Have you paid off any amount so far? Uh, uh, yes, I have. Uh, I've paid, except uh, I cannot confirm the exact amount. But um, the, the the revised figure of one seventeen, I think I had him talking about one seven thirty seven, but I think one seventeen. So I should be less than possibly 50 million. Yes. Uh, without putting these people on earth, and, 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 and I'm playing chair under rule 212, that, that we examine these people on earth, uh, we put them on earth, so that this testimony can, can get at that extrajudicial component, now that this committee has powers of the high court. And lastly, chair, uh, from the... the the, the WhatsApp message, uh, the other gentleman said he was the one chatting with uh, the ED, the, the one Robert Mwanje. But uh, the, the second last message is to the effect that, and I quote, you were one of the mediators to agree to settle the matter internally based on the above facilitation. Now, beyond revealing that it was a chat between you and, 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 and the ED, the ED is also saying you were the mediator, and and based on this facilitation, what were you mediating? What was the facilitation? Because it has disappeared somewhere. He released it. We are we are now tracing where it went, and he, he confesses on the record. And you are the mediator, so you know the background 
and you also know the beneficiaries. Just be on the record and clarify equally. That when uh, my brother David said that uh, I forked out, a, I sent out a hundred million, I'm not too sure whether I got, I was in shock. And what that exactly prompted in me that I need to follow up on this. If money changed hands and this money has been sent to us and I am not aware, then there is something wrong. For your share. Not, Sorry? You, not, you were following up for your share. You are uh, not honorable because hon you, are, you are the mediator. Honorable member, that is not, you are putting words in my mouth. I have not said that. I was very clear. My name, by the way, I have not worked for government. And uh, I didn't take trouble to give you other responsibilities that I hold. I fear to drag my name into such. So, it would require uh, a person who is irresponsible. You get such information and you keep quiet. Actually, this information, I shared it with my chairman. And I said, I am aware. This is uh, the trend that this issue is taking. We are being accused, we got money. So that was the whole whatever. But we sat in a meeting at the board and we all agreed and said, but if we, we, if we all support uh, terminating Mr. Biru's contract, when no appraisal has been done, I think we'll have a problem. You can't just go into somebody's home upon invitation and you begin scattering anyone. That was the basis. So, under the mediation was that, I really don't know. And I wouldn't have kept such messages here. I wouldn't have allowed the chair to print and share such information. If there, the minutes are there. How and many we board say members we are here? Sorry? How many board members are here? Let's see by show of hands. Who of you received money? <laughs> Madam, you want money. to switch on your microphone and talk? Chair, I am hearing about this money for the first time. Here, that Chair, there was money the or the whatever. So, you can't and you, your me. name is? Hey, 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 Sarah Walusimbi. Sarah Walusimbi. Yes. A board member? Yes. You're hearing it for the first time? Yes. Let's get a comment from each of the other board members. Yes, sir. Did you get what, what? What share did you get of this hundred million? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. My name is Alfred Oyo Andima. I never got any money out of this hundred million. They're talking about. Are you disappointed that you never got any? <laughs> I'm disappointed that the information is coming now. Oh, it should have come earlier. It should have come earlier. I would have got maybe a share, oh. but I never got any. <laughs> wow. There was another board member somewhere. Uh -huh. has confessed and he has accepted. And the committee is well composed. The chair and the, the vice, the members of parliament, the clerk, and then the CIDs. Chair, when do the CIDs do their work on this committee? Okay, I'll respond. Uh, Honorable Baka? My titles of ED, MDs, and what have you. Chair, I perused through this pamphlet. I looked at the plate of the minister to the chairman about the ED. Why should it be appointed? At the same time, I've listened to the letter to the IGG, whereby the IGG did not say there was a loss of so much. You, the accounting officer, tell us who pay. But the IGG's letter was clear. You, the loss is so much. Another person is so much. Another person is so much. That means at the level of an ID, ED, I want to know, with that memorandum of understanding you had with energy, what was your role in the field so that that money is misplaced? So I wanted to find out the qualification of the ED and the experience of what before coming to UNBS. Okay, thank you. Okay, note that, you respond. Uh, Honorable... Roland. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, chair, the, the losses that are being incurred by the taxpayer out of uh, these frauds 
are enormous. And so, to me, I think, as the vice chair uh, said earlier, we are dealing with uh, a situation that is very unique. And uh, Mr. Ebiru is very dry on the face. I don't know. Uh, considering the gravity of the matter, I think we might have to quicken our, our report. Because uh, with us is a document which has been presented to us, whereby Mr. Ebiru himself appointed a, 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 a team to do an, an administrative review of the bidders. And the team submitted their report. This is now PIVOC? Yeah. I, I wanted us to handle PIVOC separately. Can we first finish this issue? So that, uh, because PIVOC is another huge okay. element. Okay, about the, we that issue. handle properly, substantively. About that issue, for me, I think, uh, when, you, when, you use, when you use logic, if uh, actually, for me, I'm not, try, I'm, I'm not trying to to defend the board members, but if you use logic, when you look at these messages which were, uh, which the ED was writing, and he has confirmed that he wrote them, Mr. Mwanje was elusive in these messages. He would say, all right, brother, he would say, oh, oh my God. Meaning, Ebiru intentionally wrote these messages to pin some people. The way he was writing them, you could see. There is, there is no way you can say, even if it was true that you gave out money and you're writing to another person who didn't receive the money meanwhile you're writing and you're saying i don't know if you got your share so if you gave the money and it was a, a team uh, intending to share the money how come you, he was concerned whether the other one got a share what would be his problem if he was not complaining that i didn't get the money so all this i think was intended really to blackmail and I think a bill should really apologize to the board members, to the council members, about this matter. Honorable Silamala. Chair, or depending on the level of procedure, right, that we consider the same and make a ruling or make a recommendation over a recommendation of IGG. Well, I, I, I believe that. Uh, IGG, because when we make our reports, we recommend to IGG, we recommend to our government to do, do it. But then IGG has had their, you know, their say on that particular letter that the council has presented. So I would, I would believe that we, we, we actually, we, we, we ex, I don't know, I don't know how we can treat that particular letter. Honorable Kupa, then Honorable Hashim. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's why earlier on I said <laughs> we look at the documents which are submitted first before we go into. So what we have ended up, we are almost forgetting <laughs> those, those things. But but now, anyway, we are we are now. Before I would go first, on, I want to say clear. I wish I, a question I asked when the chairman yesterday complained that he has only been paid once. The document here we are showing the payment and then a number of settings. I wanted that to confirm. Is it only one payment or all these things? Oh, it's not true. Of all these settings, the board members are here, the subcommittees are not. Such that when we were making our report, we were clear that the, the board has only been paid once. So I wanted that clarified first before I move into the next thing. Okay. Um, we we're going to get a response because there's several questions that are just first said that uh, there will be drama in a few minutes which we really witnessed i wanted to confirm you know i always hear that we have really mafias in this country and today i want to say that i have confirmed that we really have mafias in this country and for me i thought that the mafias are a bit younger at least the younger ones but if i see the age of these people in front of us that there are also such kind of mafias, I really wonder, Chair. That is the only submission I wanted to say at last on these issues. Thank Honorable you. Honorable Hashim, the younger people in this room are going to take offense. Why, why do you impute artillery motives for the last board meeting? Because when these questions started coming up, 
the AD said that, but don't these guys know that uh, there was no budget for them? And now I'm getting money from the gain account to pay them. And, uh, and they are causing me trouble. So basically he was paying us from an authorized source. And he's put it in writing. So, so to prove his point, when we finished that board, that board meeting, one, which is the last one of the start of July, contrary to previous practice, he has not paid us because he's, he gets the money from a gain account. It is enough, but it's not a big deal. We've been paid before. But this is what he says. This is in the response, the response he gave to us two days ago. Uh, Mr. Chairman, when the National Standards Council was inaugurated in August 2022, there was no provision in the budget for their sitting allowances and monthly retainer. All these expenses have been paid from a part of the NTR, and we have the records to this effect. So, um, basically, paying us was pretty much a favor because uh, it had not been budgeted for. And now that we've made the noise. Just before the chair leaves, they, they have handed over the reports to government. <laughs> Mr. Edi, please proceed. <laughs> I, I was asked what is my role in the fuel marking program, that memorandum of understanding between uh, UNBS and the Ministry of Energy. These are two institutions, partner institutions, and therefore as accounting officer of UNBS, uh, I'm a core signatory to the account of the Ministry of Energy because we implement the program jointly. Uh, so that's my role. Uh, then, secondly, my qualification is that I hold a, a Master's of Commerce, uh, first class, uh, and then I have also a Bachelor of Business Administration majoring in accounting with upper second. Uh, of course, there are a lot of trainings I've undertaken uh, in management and uh, other fields of leadership. But uh, my experience, I can uh, say that I've worked with the Bureau for 10 years now, uh, eight of which was as a deputy executive director in charge of management and financial services uh, when I joined in uh, 2012. So I'm um, only two years as the ED, but having worked for eight years as a deputy. So that's my work experience. Payments were being made in a certain company, which was pretending to be uh, working for UNRWA, uh, ED working for, for UNBS. Where it did question the payment, up to now the response, you have never made any response to that effect? Uh, I will need to get details of that because uh, although we work with other, especially uh, the, the mechanics, those who are able to repair equipment, our, our, we are the ones in the lead in terms of uh, verification and issuing certificate. So I need to get what relationship we have with that company. Do you pay you? UNRWA. Yes. UNRWA pays Pays you directly onto the UNBS account or through a certain company? Uh, all our services are supposed to be paid direct to the consolidated fund, especially those from the local services, other than the people which How come How does the UNRWA pay you? It pays us through URA to the consolidated fund. Okay. Yes. So you have never received any complaint regarding the company which was purporting to be working under UNBS and they are, it was claiming a payment. A chair, if I have information, I can verify and get back to you.